Hi, Dr. Alan Feller here, and what we're going to discuss today is the E6B flight computer. That's this little doohickey thing right here, and I know it looks busy, but it's really very easy to use, and I'm going to show you how to use it in a minute. There's two sides to it with lots of stuff, but believe it or not, for the test, you're only going to use this one side here, which we'll get into in a minute. You're going to use the E6B calculator on the test to really solve for two kinds of problems. The first one is flight time problems. And in just about every flight time question, you are going to need to find the ground speed. Remember that. You're going to need to find the ground speed to solve just about every flight time question you'll encounter on the test. You do this using your E6B flight computer. Okay? You'll understand this as we do the examples. But I want to reiterate, you're always looking for ground speed. And you must use your E6B flight time calculator or flight computer to find ground speed. So let's get to some examples. Now I made up some examples. But I want you to see, I'm going to do about three of them here. I want you to see that I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again. You're either going to be given this information or you're going to find this information on the question, okay? You are going to find true course. You will be given wind information and you will be given true airspeed. So in every question dealing with flight time you're going to get true course in degrees of the compass, wind in terms of direction and speed, and true airspeed in terms of knots. So I made up some examples for us to practice with. Let's say you have a true course of 143 degrees. Let's say your wind is 030 degrees at 12 knots. And let's say your true airspeed is 95 knots. Okay. Your goal is to find your ground speed. Okay you have to find your ground speed. That's what you're looking for. The only way to find your ground speed is to use this device. And let me show you how you do it. And we'll do a few of these examples. First of all, you want to set the device onto the 100 mark. It doesn't have to be the 100 mark, but I use the 100 mark every time because there's a bunch of zeros on it. But it doesn't really matter what the, the actual numbers on the scale says as long as you know that each line on the scale represents two knots. So this would be two knots from this, from this little center hole here. This would be two knots, this would be four knots, six knots, eight knots, ten knots, twelve knots, and so on up the line. You don't have to really know why, just remember that. That you want your zeros, the 100, to be the 100 arc to be under the center hole here that basically sets the calculator to zero. Don't worry why, just do this every single time and you'll get the right answer. Now, now that this is under 100, the first thing you do in every single one of these questions is you look at your true course. The true course is 143 degrees. If you look up here, there's a little arrow here called true index. Just remember that the arrow up here is called true index and that's where you're going to put the true course. So the true course is 143 degrees, so we're going to spin the wheel till we get to 143 degrees. So there's 140, 141, to uh, about 143, I guess that's about right. So you put this onto 143. Once that's on 143, you're done with the true course number. The next number you're interested in is the wind speed. So there's the wind speed that was given to us. 
So it's 12 knots. So the next thing you do is you want to enter the 12 knots. The way you do that is you count up from the center hole. Remember that each of these arcs represents two knots. So you want to go up to 12 knots. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And what you want to do is put a mark right on the center line on the arc that represents 12 knots going up from the center counting two knots on each line. By the way, I could have jumped easily because I know every, every dark arc represents 10 knots. So I could do 10 plus 2 is 12 and I'd be right in the same place. Okay, and you can draw on this transparency. It's designed to pick up the, um, the pencil and then be erased later. So, now you've used two numbers. Now you're going to use a third number. The third number is the wind direction, which here is 0, 3, 0. And if you watch as I spin the wheel to 0, 3, 0, you're going to see my pencil mark begin to move. And I put this right on 0, 3, 0. Right about there. And you'll notice that this pencil mark moved. Now, you're going to enter the fourth and final uh, number that you were given, which is the true airspeed. So what you do is you'll see this card slides. So you slide this card until the arc representing 95 knots appears under the dot. So there's 90. So if I move this, this is on the 90 arc. You see the, the, this is the 90 arc. I put the arc under the dot, the 90 arc here, but I want to go to 95. So that I want to go count up 90, 92, 94, and the space in between represents 95. So that is now on 95 knots. Now at this point, all I have to do is look at the arc that falls under the center hole here. Let me see if I can get in a little closer for you. If we look under the arc, the arc that's under the center hole, it's not quite the arc of the 100, and it's not quite the arc representing 98. So it must be in between, so it's 99. So the answer for ground speed is 99 knots. Okay, that's what you use the E6B calculator in this case to do, is find ground speed. Now in the flight time question you will use that ground speed number that you found in a simple formula and you will get the answer to your question. But you need to use the E6B calculator to find the ground speed given these four bits of information. You're going to do it the same way every single time. So we're going to do another one.